Welcome to the section Integrating the Healthcare Enterprise, or IHE. And in this section, let's start out by recapping a few of the things we've already touched on. So we know that DICOM is responsible for the requirements specific to medical imaging. NHL 7 defines the requirements for clinical textual data. However, neither of these requirements provide us any information about how to accomplish specific clinical workflow challenges. And they don't explicitly tell us how these two standards are supposed to interact with each other. And that's where we start to see the difference between a standard versus a framework. The standard allows us to define the what. So we have a standard like HL7 and DICOM, and this allows us to have confidence that if I'm using a modality that is compliant with DICOM and another DICOM node, like a PAX or something, and it's compliant, I should be able to send an image from one to the other and have it stored successfully. But those are just the mechanics of getting the image from one location to the other and making sure that structurally it follows the standard. The framework takes it a bit further. And this is where we define the how. And IHE comes in as a framework of standards that promotes the use of, uh, of standards such as HL7 and DICOM for the purpose of accomplishing specific clinical workflow challenges. IHE started back in 1998, and um, it's worth acquainting ourselves with this new term here, uh, IHE profile. So an IHE profile is a document that provides the fundamental terminology and, and, and workflow understanding of how a specific workflow challenge or clinical use case could be solved using established standards. And it would define what the standards are being used um, to accomplish those specific use cases. So an example of this is we have the scheduled workflow IHE profile or SWIFT. So I mentioned IHE started in 1998. This is the very first IHE profile. Now, one of the challenges we can think of in, uh, from our workflow is we have the images here and we have the HL7 on this side of things. We know Patients get, uh, get admitted into the hospital, and they get ordered, and there's results, and that's all on the HL7 side. Um, and how do we tie this together? And this is where this scheduled workflow allows us to have a defined method of when I come in as a patient and I'm going to get registered, um, that information will get sent down to other downstream systems, and we'll make sure that it's usable for helping us accomplish a full um, life cycle of this study. Now, if we zoom in and wanted to take a look at what this profile looked like, um, we would see something like this. And so in the rectangles and squares, those are actors. And we see <clears throat> actor names like image manager, image archive. Uh, we see DSS order filler. But what are those? We, we haven't, we've never heard those terms yet. Um, I don't see anything that says PACS or radiology information system or RIS or HIS or EMR. And the reason why is that IHE is non-prescriptive. So you could have a specific workflow use case and it, it could be the PACS that is typically fulfilling the image manager, image archive role. However, it could be fulfilled by other devices. The, maybe you have a VNA or maybe another DICOM node or maybe um, there's other um, systems that you have employed. And that's why you'll see these profiles and the solution names are not spelled out in the way that we speak of them. But we have these other terms so that it's non-prescriptive so that any device could be potentially fulfilling that um, role in that as an actor. And then between those connection points where we see two actors communicating with each other, we see a number of transactions that are um, being executed. So let's take a little closer look at this. So this is two of the actors that had um, an interaction and we see there is the acquisition modality and the order filler. So the order filler 
is where we are going to be scheduling or ordering that patient. And uh, that would typically be the wrist or the radiology information system. But it doesn't have to be. In, in many cases, it's often the PACs or there could be um, other systems like a, an integration engine or something that is fulfilling that role. But all we really want to make sure in this case is that when I walk to the scanner to receive my imaging, that the technologist that's going to perform the scan is able to pull the source of truth, the HL7, and be able to associate that with the imaging. And that's where in this scheduled workflow um, instance here, this transaction, we're able to accomplish that. So we see this transaction, it says query modality work list, RAD5. And RAD5, that's a term that um, within IHE, um, a specific action around what is happening with the RAD5 query modality work list. But essentially, this allows us to be able to perform a certain type of DICOM query against the order filler, and we can see who are the patients that are coming in to receive imaging. And that allows us to be able to have the technologist select from a list, and then they can um, uh, pull from the, that work list, that uh, return list that comes back, and now I have the source of truth that's going to wrap that image around uh, with a very rich metadata coming from the HL7.